You may have heard of the term linear attenuation coefficient before and been completely confused about what it actually is. Well, not to worry because you'll know exactly what it means by the next few minutes. Let's go. In short, the linear attenuation coefficient is a term used in physics that describes the level of attenuation that occurs when an X-ray passes and interacts with a material. Or in other words, it's the fractional reduction or degree to which a material reduces the intensity of a beam of radiation as it passes through it. And it includes all possible X-ray interactions such as elastic scatter, the photoelectric effect, and Compton scatter. If that confuses you, I don't blame you. So let's break down the words one by one. Okay, first we have linear. No prizes for knowing this one. Just referring to an X-ray that's going in a straight path. Next is attenuation, which you can think of as reducing the beam's energy, force, or effect, or in terms of medical imaging, it's just referring to how much an X-ray beam reduces its intensity as it attempts to go through matter. And lastly, we have the word coefficient, which you may have heard of in high school maths. And it's just simply a number or constant that's derived experimentally that our value of interest is multiplied by. So for example, if we have 4x squared, the 4 is the coefficient that's multiplying against x squared. And this coefficient is denoted by the symbol mu, expressed as the ratio of intensity of radiation before and after it passes through a material, with the unit being the inverse of the length, so either centimeters to minus 1 or meters to minus 1. The attenuation Radiation coefficient is dependent on several factors, including the energy of radiation, the type of radiation, X-rays, gamma rays, neutrons, the density and composition of a material, and the path length of the radiation going through the material. In general, higher energy radiation is less attenuated than low energy radiation, and denser materials result in more attenuation than less dense materials. And that makes sense, right? Because if our X-ray beam has a very high energy, it's going to plow through that material much easier and be stopped less, that is less attenuated, compared to a lower energy beam. And if a material is more dense, let's say bone versus muscle, the bone is going to attenuate the x-ray beam more, meaning it'll reduce the intensity more than the muscle would. So it should make sense that the composition of the material can also affect the attenuation coefficient, as different elements have different absorption properties for different types of radiation, making the piece of tissue or matter more or less dense. In medical imaging, the attenuation coefficient is used to measure the amount of radiation absorbed by each tissue, which is then used to create an image with contrast between the different types of tissues. And note that this coefficient value increases with an increasing atomic number or density of the material being penetrated, which makes sense because a denser material could stop an x-ray being faster and therefore in a shorter distance. An important application of attenuation coefficient is in radiation therapy. In radiation therapy, high energy radiation is used to kill cancer cells. The attenuation coefficient is used to calculate the amount of radiation that is absorbed by the tumor and surrounding tissues, which is used to determine the optimal dose of radiation delivered to the tumor. By optimizing the dosage of radiation, the therapy can be made more more effective whilst minimizing the damage to the surrounding healthy tissues. In nuclear physics, the attenuation coefficient is an important property of materials that determines the likelihood of radiation interacting within the material. By measuring the attenuation of radiation as it passes through the different materials, we can determine the composition and density of the materials, as well as their ability to absorb or scatter radiation. But note that the composition of materials can only be determined if you use spectral or dual energy CT to measure two different mu values for each material. In material science, similarly, the the attenuation coefficient is an important property to study in order to understand radiation interactions in materials. By measuring the attenuation of radiation as it passes through different materials, again using dual energy CT, we can determine the composition and density of the materials as well as their ability to absorb and scatter radiation. And this information can be used to design materials with specific properties, such as radiation shielding or imaging contrast agents. An interesting point is that the half value layer, or HVL for short, is closely related to this concept. And as the name suggests, it's referring to the the thickness of material that will reduce the x-ray intensity by 50% or half. And of course, this level of thickness will be different depending on the material. That is, the denser material will have a lower HVO than a lighter one, because it doesn't require as much thickness to reduce the x-ray intensity by half. At some stage, I'll make a separate video on this, which you can find below. Now, let's look at how we can do some calculations with what we've learned so far. The intensity of a beam at distance x in a given material can be calculated with the following formula, where Ix is the intensity of the x-ray, or any beam really, after being transmitted across distance x. I0 is the intensity of the original beam, E is just the mathematical constant, mu is the coefficient we're looking for, and x is the distance traveled or the thickness of the object. So we can actually rearrange this formula using simple algebra and log rules, which hopefully you'll recall from high school maths. Let's say that we want to isolate mu by itself, so we calculate the coefficient for a piece of tissue or material. First, let's divide both sides by I0. Then take the natural log of both sides, and note that when you do that for E, it brings down the exponent as a coefficient. Now, I'll multiply both sides by minus 1, which gets me mu x on the right hand side and a flipped log on the left 
because log rules. And then simply divide both sides by x to get mu isolated. Or alternatively, I could have divided by mu and gotten x by itself. Are you with me? All right, now let's do an example question. If I asked you to calculate the thickness of material required to bring down an x-ray beam's intensity by half, if that material's linear attenuation or absorption coefficient was 0.4 centimeters minus one, what would it be? Now pause the video and try to calculate this yourself. I'll wait. All right, now let me show you. So we just bring out our equation that we were working on before and I'm gonna start substituting numbers. First of all, the question told us that the intensity came down by half of its original value. So I can say I zero is two and I X is one, easy. Then I said that the attenuation coefficient of this mystery material is 0.4. So that'll be the mu. Pop that in the calculator and we get 1.73 centimeters. That's because the coefficient was in centimeters to minus one. If the question said 0.4 meters to minus one, then X would be 1.73 meters. Got it? The units are meant to cancel out. Excellent, now let's try another one. This time the question says that an X-ray beam has reduced its intensity by 70% after going through five centimeters of this mystery material. And we need to calculate the attenuation coefficient of this material. Again, pause the video to see if you can calculate it yourself. Okay, so the first thing to do is to determine the original and final intensities. I'll just say that the original intensity or I zero was one, and this was reduced by 70%. So that'll mean I X would be one minus one times 0 0.7, which is just 0.3. Then it says that the thickness of the material is five centimeters. So that'll be our X. Now going back to our equation here, we substitute in our values. So we have log of one divided by 0.3, all divided by five, which gives us a linear attenuation coefficient of 0 0.24. Now, did you also get that? Bet you did, you smart cookie. Well done. All right, that's it for now. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, I really appreciate a like. In the next video, I'll be expanding on this a little bit more and talking about the mass attenuation coefficient. So click here to watch that. See you there and stay curious.